and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, B2B Marketing, How to Effectively Diversify Your Media Mix. My name is Alexandra Pontikis, and I'm part of the marketing team here at StackAdapt. Before getting started, we have some housekeeping items to cover, and then we can get the webinar underway. So we're happy to field any question you might have on any of the content. Please play, feel free to place them in the questions area of the GoToWebinar panel. We'll address all questions at the end of our session during the Q&A. If there are any questions we're not able to address in, the, in, in that time, we'll follow up directly with you after the webinar. And just a quick note, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared shortly after we end. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Louise and Megan to get, get us started. Louise and Megan, over to you. Thanks, uh, Alex. Uh, hi, I'm Louise Henderson, a sales manager at Stack Adapt. Uh, I joined Stack Adapt last year, but I've worked in the media industry for over 20 years both agency side and publisher. I'm really excited to be presenting to you today as I think the B2B market is really evolving with more clients realizing the importance of understanding the complexities of the buyer journey and shifting focus to advertising across all stages of the marketing funnel. Now over to my co-host Megan. Thanks, Louise. My name is Megan and I joined Stack Adapt at the midpoint of last year. I've been working within the advertising industry for over 10 years now. My experience prior to Stack Adapt was mainly publisher side focused on B2B financial clients. I'm very happy to be now adding another string to my bow here, looking after a book of both B2B as well as B2C clients across all verticals. So with that, I'm going to give a very quick overview of Stack Adapt as an introduction to our webinar today. For those who are or possibly aren't aware, Stack Adapt is a self-serve programmatic advertising platform and we offer a holistic solution to your advertising needs from planning, strategy, execution, reporting to in-house creative building, market research and much more. On that note, um, Louise, let's move on to the agenda. So we've got an exciting agenda to get through today. I'll firstly be going through the B2B landscape, which should give you some helpful insights into changes within marketers' behavior over the years. Louise will then go through how to start building your strategy and discuss some key criteria when it comes to a successful B2B campaign, why you should consider using multiple channels in your media mix, and then some different targeting strategies for B2B We'll then jump onto some questions that you've asked along with a wrap up of today's discussion. So firstly, uh, going right into the B2B marketing landscape today so that we can identify some trends and hopefully give you some food for thought and ideas to consider when trying to reach this audience. The B2B marketing landscape has changed dramatically over the past few years and 2023 will see further changes again. So unsurprisingly, Display will surpass search advertising this year and by next year will make up almost 50% of all B2B ad spend. We'll see another increase in ads placed on mobile this year with more than 50% of B2B ads placed on the mobile device. As always, there will also be a focus on sales enablement, demand gen, ABM, field and event marketing to complement the overall display marketing campaigns. The buying cycle within B2B has changed over the past two years, shifting to a self-serve buyer journey. Because buyers are carrying out more research than ever themselves, it's important to carefully consider the tactics and the environments that you're placing your content in. Marketers must adjust to reach buyers in digital avenues in a consumer oriented way and let the buyer drive the discussion. The mantra of provide the right content in the right channels at the right time in the cycle to all stakeholders is going to be essential. You can see some highlights on this slide of the B2B buyer's age profile, as well as some of the steps that they're taking within their own research, such as visiting the website, etc. B2B marketing objectives will always differ per company and per campaign, and not all are revenue focused. But some of the concerns marketers are currently addressing through the B2B marketing are highlighted on this slide. So we can see that 70% of marketers are looking to improve the quality of their leads and 54% are looking to increase the volume of leads. While 58% are looking to increase sales revenue, 25% are looking to improve ROI measurability. We'll also see some marketers looking to improve internal alignment between sales and marketing 
lead data accuracy and analytics, and lead data segmentation. So we've already gone through the buying cycle and how buyers are veering more and more towards self-directed research. So it's important to consider the strategic roadmap for B2B digital selling. By 2025, 80% of B2B sales integrations will occur in digital settings, which will be a shift from 2022 and three, where the focus was more on virtual assistance and conversational engagement and analytics. The digital commerce capabilities will enable the, con the customer to choose how much of the buying process they want to handle themselves. And with that in mind, it's more important than ever to consider your product sales processes and how they can be adapted to facilitate this digital first transformation. So compared to 2019 numbers, the largest incremental change is in the research stage which has grown by 23% into the digital self-serve interaction preference. This shows that creating relevant content to educate and stay top of mind for users is imperative in growing your client base. Programmatic can help promote this content in order to stand out from your competitors. The four stages of this model are research, evaluate, order and reorder. So we'll now move on to the next section where Louise will go through how to start building your strategy. Thanks for giving us an overview of the B2B landscape, Megan. Now that we have an understanding of how the B2B market is evolving, we can move on to look at building your strategy and paramount to this is defining your audience. When it comes to defining your audience for B2B campaigns, planning is much the same as for B2C. You need to consider the persona of the audience you're wanting to reach, but this time from a business perspective. Of course, you need to consider basic demographics such as age and gender, and define their psychographics, behavior, and preferences. But more importantly, for B2B campaigns, you need to define your buyer's journey. What product needs do they have? Is your audience more likely to be driven by price or by quality? How long is a typical purchase life cycle? And of course, for B2B campaigns, you need to define your audience's firmographics. What is their company size, revenue, and industry? Once you've fully defined the audience you're wanting to target, you can look ahead at understanding the market and funnel and where it's important to invest your media budget. When it comes to B2B marketing, there are several stages in the consumer journey. Awareness, consideration, decision, and then finally purchasing and hopefully moving on to renewal. Traditionally, B2B clients have focused their investment and marketing efforts on bottom of the funnel strategies such as lead generation. However, this typically creates a bottleneck funnel with our clients often advising us that they have reached the limit of their targeting pool. This is because low investment into awareness campaigns constricts your bottom funnel success. With low investment into your upper funnel, you've got limited brand awareness. This in turn means you're delivering assets to an unaware audience. This audience is therefore less likely to convert and therefore provides your team with less leads to nurture. However, by investing more budget and focus towards upper funnel tactics, including brand awareness and considering new growth channels such as CTV, we can drive a new audience. We can build your prospecting pool and ensure this new audience goes through the full marketing funnel to conversion and purchase. By investing in the upper funnel, you ensure wide reach and awareness you deliver assets to an already interested audience and activate a high volume of quality leads. Disproportionate investment helps B2B sales funnels remain sustainable and ensure you continue to have fresh prospects to nurture. However, we find buyers don't necessarily move through this journey in linear steps. Typically, they are working on several tasks under different stages. This makes the buyer journey more lengthy and complex. So, how do we ensure we show the right ads to the right B2B audience at the right time to influence this complex buyer journey? For 2023, we anticipate that teams will have a greater understanding of the buyer journey, the five pillars identified, and how and when to take action. Greater visibility into the buyer research phase and buyers go to market actions is raising awareness of what more can actually be done to identify and accelerate these opportunities. By further understanding 
the buyer journey, B2B marketers will know what, when, and how to advertise to their audience to create engagement. At the buyer research phase, your audience is identifying their problem and looking for, looking for solutions. The need to increase your brand awareness at this stage is key. You should be considering branded advertising, ungated content, blogs, and white paper downloads. Ensure that your brand is top of mind during this stage in the buyer journey and actually establish your brand as a thought leader. As your audience moves forward to requirement building and supplier selection, your campaigns need to move on to intense strategies. This can include webinar promotion, buyer's guides, retargeting ads, and case studies. All of these tactics will build your prospecting pool. And then finally, once you have an extensive CRM list, you can employ first-party targeting tactics. By implementing all of these campaign strategies, you can ensure you drive your prospects down the funnel as you follow their buyer journey to purchase decision. But what next? After the purchase, don't forget that your existing customers are often your most valuable. You need to ensure you cross-sell, upsell, and have growth strategies in place to ensure you have customer loyalty. In 2023, three times as many CMAs will make customer health a top priority. 54% of marketers in the US and UK expect to spend more on customer marketing in 2023. And marketers are expected to widen their use of B2C tactics to retain clients. In light of current economic uncertainty, B2B organizations will strive to grow with their trusted suppliers. And as a result, B2B growth strategies will lean heavily towards retention. Now I'll pass you on to Megan to discuss Stack Adapt channels for B2B. Thank you, Louise. So let's jump into the channels and the media mix. So when combining multiple channels for the same advertising campaign, you can gain greater reach by capturing people who are only on some of the channels. Having addressed the full marketing funnel, industry trends and everything in between, we're going to now take a closer look at the different channels which are at your disposal as B2B marketers. Stack Adapt is an omni-channel DSP, so we facilitate campaigns across video, native, display, digital out of home, in-game, audio and connected TV. Each channel can be seen as a means of hitting a specific KPI, Video is great for telling complex or emotional stories, making it perfect for certain types of brand building. Native is amazing for selling brands with an interesting educational and entertaining story, while display is more of a workhorse. Use it to lift the performance of the other channels. Native ads are a great paid content distribution channel for your blog articles and long form content. Native ads are consumed the same way that people view editorial content, which could attribute to consumers looking at native ads 53% more frequently than display ads, and why they also tend to register higher lift in purchase intent and brand affinity than display ads. According to Triple Lift, native ads drive three times higher brand awareness and purchase intent, deliver 250% higher ad engagement, and lead to conversions that drive a 475% return on ad spend. The goal or goals that are chosen will help craft creative, execution, targeting, and measurement. Display remains an essential component in many advertiser toolkits. It's still the richest tactic to learn about your customers and to collect information that helps you communicate most effectively. The best practices for display are be compelling, be intriguing, be relevant and be enticing. Some examples of how to make your ads stand out are on display on this slide. Use Carousel HTML5 ads to highlight the benefits clients can expect from your products or solutions, problems you can solve for them or package solutions that you offer. Each item can click out to a different landing page, making it easy to start moving users down the funnel. A countdown ad is a great way to create a sense of urgency for events whether it be an upcoming webinar, exhibition, or industry conference. These dynamic countdown ads are possible through rich media and are available across all display inventory. You can also leverage interactive display to highlight the physical products of your, your business creates. Users get the full picture with a swipeable unit that showcases multiple product shots to create a 360 view. 
the interactivity builds brand recall and elevates banners from boring to captivating. Video is great for keeping your brand centre stage and showing how your values align with the audiences. The initial frames of an ad should be well branded and engaging to capture consumers' attention and still have an impact if closed or skipped. To ensure value is maximised for video ads, Stack Adapt connects your message with the most relevant audience, continuously optimising to drive successful cost per completed view and performance for your campaigns. When compared to the small mobile or laptop screen, a CTV ad is more immersive and relaxed and typically delivers significantly higher completion rates than desktop, laptop or mobile viewing. An excerpt from the drum says, put yourself in the shoes of the average viewer. You've had a long busy day at work and you're relaxing at home in a darkened room watching TV. Do you want to enjoy an ad experience that informs and entertains? You bet. At the end of the day, TV informs consumers while offering entertainment and fun, so why not create an ad that does the same thing? For B2B campaigns, CTV is best used as an upper or mid-funnel tactic. At the top of the funnel, you can find new prospects and introduce the brand story with the video. At the middle of the funnel, you can leverage CTV to retarget those users who have visited your site, ensuring the ad is product or service focused. This allows the viewer to further engage with the ad by imagining themselves actually interacting with or using the product or service. At Stack it Up, you can reach target audience, target accounts, sorry, by using firmographic data, including in-market intent and job function to fuel personalized targeting. To connect with prospects at their personal at-home touchpoint in a privacy compliant manner, and also utilising IP and location data to reach offices and decision makers wherever they are. Our data set covers thousands of top companies around the world. So, including audio in your B2B strategy. Audio is emotionally engaging and unlike other forms of media, it's listened to with undistracted attention. This makes audio the perfect medium for building brand awareness. At Stack Adapt, we can curate private marketplace audio deals to reach listeners across music genres and podcasts. We can target executives by building audience pools during high value conferences and trade shows, by setting up geo radius targeting, and we can also leverage audio completion rates to create an audience pool of people to retarget across native and display channels. I'm now going to hand back over to Louise to cover the B2B targeting and analytics part of the presentation. Thanks for presenting those channels, Megan. It's really great to hear the insight into new channels such as CTV, which are now becoming such an important part of the B2B mix. Now I'm going to move on to discuss the audience targeting solutions for B2B in the Stack Adapt platform. Firstly, looking at audience lookalike expansion. This may not be applicable for all campaigns. However, if you've got an extensive list of first party data, we can upload this to the Stack Adapt platform. Once your CRM list is uploaded, we can apply lookalike modeling to scale your campaigns. Lookalike modeling mimics the behavior of the current clients on your existing CRM list to target a similar relevant audience. We will of course exclude the original seed audience to ensure we're targeting a brand new prospecting pool for your campaign. As an example, if you have collected a first party list of those who have attended a conference or an event, we can upload this to your account. We will ensure all details are hashed for privacy protection and then use lookalike modeling expansion to find a new audience that's actually exhibiting similar behavior to those who intended the event you wanted to target. Lookalike audience expansion is really effective tool to create scale for your campaigns and allow you to identify a new audience. At Stack Adapt, we also have access to third party B2B segments and providers. These include Latame, Exalate, Bombora, IOTA, and Visual DNA. On the platform, there's access to a catalogue of over 250,000 pre built third party segments. Many of these focus on specific B2B audiences. This catalogue is fully searchable, and you can simply select the segments you want to use for targeting and add them to your account. In addition to this, we also work with third party providers such as Bombora to create custom segments based on specific characteristics. These can include company size, revenue and job function. 
we will work with our data, dedicated data solutions team to have these custom segments created. And once they are built, we'll ensure these are ported into your account on the platform for you to use for campaign targeting. Almost 50% of uh, UK and US marketeers use third party data to maximize revenue, to better target and segment audiences, and to improve the customer experience. But what other ways can marketers create and use custom audiences? ABM marketing is expected to continue to inform demand generation practices in 2023. According to Salesforce, B2B marketing organizations are allocating an average of about 15% of their budget to ABM. Such investments into account-based marketing emphasizes the importance and value that is now placed on personalized messaging and engagement, which is spread from B2C to B2B campaigns. Account-based marketing takes customization to the next step. You can provide us with a list of the companies you wish to target. We can then work with third-party provider Bombora, Bombora and create a custom account-based list for your campaign. With programmatic, you also have the capability to actually mix and match multiple attributes, including things like demographic and firmographic data, or technographics and intent. And this allows you to define and build a highly targeted audience for your campaign. However, we do recommend that in Amir, we work with a large target account list when looking at creating ABM campaigns to ensure we can achieve the desired scale for your campaigns. Now that people are returning to the workplace and back to attending events and conferences, location data is once becoming an important targeting tactic for B2B. Location targeting in Stack Adapt platform allows you to target office locations, corporate campuses, event attendees, and to actually create custom intersection audiences. Using GeoRadius targeting the platform, we can upload a list of latitudes and longitudes for your desired locations, apply a custom radius around these locations, and then look to target and retarget this audience for your campaigns. For example, we could use GeoRadius targeting to focus on users attending specific events and then retarget this audience throughout the year with personalized campaign messaging. In the Stack Adapt platform, we also have postcode, city, and country targeting available. And of course, ISP targeting allows you to target end users based on the internet service provider they are connected to. All of these tactics allow you to reach the right audience in the right location with Stack Adapt. Looking at Page Context AI, this is Stack Adapt's cookie solution, allowing for contextual targeting for B2B campaigns. Using patent pending AI technology, we can actually create personal user experiences. Page Context AI makes it possible to target and reach users currently reading about a specific topic, allowing for hyper relevant ad placements that ensure your ad resonates with users in the right mindset. So why not consider placing an ad for project management software against an article about best project management software? In doing this, we can ensure we target the right audience at the most opportune time and create a positive connection with your brand. 79% of UK consumers are known to be more comfortable seeing online ads that are relevant to the web page they appear within as opposed to being ads that are based on their browsing history. In the EMEA market, we're actually able to offer page context AI solutions in English, French, German, Portuguese, Italian, and Spanish, ensuring you can build privacy-friendly campaigns that offer precision targeting and multi-channel scale. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Before we move on to the Q&A, I'd just like to give you an overview of what we have presented today for you to take away and consider when planning your next campaign. Firstly, pay attention to growth trends. B2B ad spend is in a growth trajectory. Marketers are taking advantage of new innovations. Now is the time to step away from focusing purely on those bottom of funnel strategies and consider brand awareness tactics and new channels such as CTV and audio. We know the buyer's journey is complex and not linear, and by advertising across multiple channels and targeting your audiences at all stages of the funnel, you can ensure you reach influential B2B decision makers 
with the right message at the right time. Programmatic campaigns allow you to take advantage of advanced B2B targeting strategies. Whether you're looking at custom audience creation or contextual advertising, with Stack Adapt, we can ensure your message is delivered in the right place and the right context. Now, let's allow time for some of your questions. Thank you, Louise, and thank you, Megan. That was super insightful. Uh, we'd now like to jump in the, to, into the Q&A portion of the webinar and open up the floor to any questions. And as a reminder, if you have any question, please place them in the question box of the GoToWebinar panel. Uh, there are already uh, several questions coming through, uh, so just a heads up, if we're not able to get to yours today, not to worry, we'll follow up directly with you after the webinar. Okay, so first question, uh, what kind of measurement capabilities are available for CTV ads and can you do uh, impression retargeting with Stack Adapt? I'll, I'll jump in and answer this question then. Um, so the measurement metrics available for a CTV through Stack Adapt are VCR, which is video completion rate, CPCV, which is cost per completed view, quartile completions, impressions, reach, and also CPM. Thank you. And, and would Pitch Context AI be a best fit for awareness or conversion campaigns or both? Um, I'll jump in and take that one. Uh, we find both actually. PCI has typically been more of an awareness tactic. Your ads are placed in a contextually relevant environment and this ensures your brand resonates and creates positive connections. So it's great for brand awareness campaigns. However, we have also found that PCI can actually outperform retargeting campaigns when it comes to post view conversions. And this makes it also an effective targeting tactic for conversions campaigns. A lot of users don't click on the ad right away. This is because they're engaged with the content they are reading. However, often because of the correlation between your brand and that content, they later convert post view, making it a great tactic for both awareness and conversion. Thank you so much for that. And, and can we cross target users from CTV to display a native with, with the platform, with our platform? I'll take this one. Um, so yes, we can create retargeting pools of users uh, based on quartile or completion viewership of CTV ads, and then we can retarget them with display or native. Um, some things to note on that, that there can be a drop off in scale because it's cross device targeting, but it is doable. Um, again, just be cautious if the CTV audience you're targeting specifically is really small, that would be difficult to retarget because of scale. Thank you, Megan. And um, how specific can you get with ABM targeting without scalability issues? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I'll take that one. Um, it's definitely something to be mindful of, um, but how specific you can get would largely depend on the size of your ABM list, but also on the market you're looking to run the campaign. For instance, EMEA is more challenging than the US market due to stricter privacy laws in place. I'd recommend that when running an ABM campaign, and um, particularly in Amir, it is best to keep it at company level and not to overlay additional targeting. We find the larger the list, the better. However, it can depend on the size of the companies you're wanting to reach, the data partners you're using. Um, so for best kind of tactics, I'd recommend speaking with your account manager, share your ABM list with them. They can look at the company sizes, size of the list, et cetera and can discuss kind of specific uh, scalability issues with you. Thank you for that. And uh, talking about uh, data partners, where does Bombora get its data from and is it deterministic? Um, yeah, I'm glad somebody asked about Bombora because Bombora is the key B2B third party provider that we uh, partner with for the EMEA market. Um, in terms of where they get their data, Bombora actually use a, a patent pending method. So they fuse deterministic, behavioral, and internet protocol data to resolve people's business uh, identities. They also enhance this data with firmographic and demographic data to resolve pre-purchase signals of buyers across about 2.8 million businesses globally. So it's a really key partner for us here in this market. Great, thank you so much. Um, amazing. Uh, and, and 
Thank you both for such an insightful presentation. And that concludes today's webinar. There are a few questions that were still coming in, uh, but like we said, we'll, we'll respond to them after the webinar. Um, but thank you all for attending today. We hope you found it both informative and insightful. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a recording to all registrants. So not to worry, you will actually get access to the entire presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other question. Like I said, we'll answer any question we haven't answered today. Thanks again for joining us, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.